In the hushed pre-dawn of May 3rd, 1982, ARA Alferez Sobral, an Argentine patrol boat, tenaciously swept the South Atlantic near the Falkland Islands on a desperate mission to rescue a downed Canberra bomber crew. The sailors were on edge, navigating treacherous waters beneath the weight of uncertainty when a British Sea King helicopter spotted them. In response, Alferez Sobral's four Ehrlichan cannon unleashed a stream of cannon fire, scarring but not destroying the helicopter, forcing it to retreat and call for reinforcements. Two Westland Lynx helicopters took flight from the decks of HMS Coventry and HMS Glasgow. Sleek and deadly, they surged through the night air with predatory intent. The Alferez Sobral, still reeling from the first encounter, had barely any time to mount a defense. British helicopters sliced through the air, maneuvering into striking positions. They launched their Sea Skua missiles. The first missile demolished the ship's cannon, and the second brutally impacted the bridge. Chaos and fire erupted aboard Alferez Sobral. Eight crew members, including the captain, perished in the blaze, with another eight injured. Now a lifeless shell, devoid of power and guidance systems, the ship wandered aimlessly on the waves. Only a day later, she was escorted home by a friendly helicopter. The survivors would speak of a swift, formidable attack helicopter with unprecedented agility and firepower. They unknowingly described the world's fastest combat helicopter and a marvel of British engineering. Jack of all trades. The Westland Lynx helicopter has an impressive history and is renowned for its speed and agility. Its development began in the mid-1960s when a helicopter was required to replace the aging Westland Scout. The development process of the Lynx was relatively swift, with its first flight taking place on March 21, 1971. It took another six years before the Lynx became operational and entered service with the Army Air Corps, eventually receiving 113 Lynx units. One of the most remarkable achievements of the Lynx helicopter was its ability to set world speed records. In 1972, just a year after its first flight, the Lynx broke the world speed record over 15 and 25 kilometers by flying at 199.9 miles per hour. It also set a new 100 kilometer closed circuit record shortly afterward, flying at 197.9 miles per hour, or 318.5 kilometers per hour. These records were set by Elroy Maxim OBE who, at the time, was Westland's deputy chief test pilot. The Lynx continued to push the boundaries of helicopter speed. In 1986, a specially modified Lynx, registered as G-Lynx, equipped with Gem 60 engines and British Experimental Rotor Program, or BURP, rotor blades, set a speed record for helicopters over a 15 and 25 kilometer course by reaching a staggering speed of 249.09 miles per hour, or 401 kilometers per hour. The burp blade tips of the helicopter reached a speed close to the speed of sound at Mach 0.97. With this record still standing, the Lynx is the world's fastest combat helicopter. In addition to its raw speed, the Lynx was known for its agility and versatility. It was crucial in supporting the British Army, performing various tasks, including battlefield utility, intelligence surveillance, target acquisition, reconnaissance, and anti-tank missions using tow missiles. It earned the nickname Jack of All Trades due to the sheer number of roles it could fulfill successfully. Furthermore, the Lynx was a crowd favorite at air shows due to its ability to perform aerobatic maneuvers, including a backflip, which was made possible by its main rotor's efficiency and high top speed. The Lynx was initially the only helicopter capable of performing a backflip from a hover position, but other helicopters with rigid or semi-rigid main rotor systems such as the B0105 and the AH-64 Apache, later became capable of performing this maneuver. The Lynx helicopter's combination of speed, agility, and versatility made it an exceptional asset in military operations and a remarkable piece of aviation technology. Powerful Design The Lynx went through a long evolution, beginning as the modest Lynx 1, and culminating in the formidable Lynx 7 we know today. The change was all-encompassing. 
It offered an enriched performance that entirely transcended the capabilities of the original Mark I variant. It resulted in more powerful engines, intricately operated gearboxes, a larger composite tail rotor, and newly minted main rotor blades. Amid this rebirth, a fleet of 107 Lynx H1s was painstakingly converted, a project underpinned by the Army Air Corps purchasing an additional 12 Lynx H7 helicopters to fortify their squadron. Visually, the Lynx showcased a distinctive cockpit nestled just behind the nose of the aircraft. Both pilot and co-pilot enjoyed a side-by-side -side arrangement, with a large cabin waiting just behind them. Access to this spacious area was easy, with two wide windowed doors gracing either side of the fuselage. The Lynx's powerhouse, twin turboshaft engines, sat behind and above the cabin. The rotor assembly consisted of a robust four-blade semi-rigid main rotor complemented by a four-blade tail rotor on the tail port side, designed in a cruciform pattern. The composite tail rotor rotated in the opposing direction to the main, an ingenious innovation to curtail operational noise. The main rotor was held by a forged titanium hub, bearing testament to the sturdiness required of this airborne titan. Agile and acrobatic, the Lynx had to be robust and resilient, with a skeleton of steel that could withstand the pressures of its aerobatic role. The Lynx could land on either a traditional skid system or a trio of retractable wheels, flexibility not often seen in helicopters. Armament options for the Lynx were as diverse as the roles it was designed to undertake. Boasting a wide-ranging naval capacity, anti-submarine versions could accommodate a pair of torpedoes, Mark 44, 46 244s, and Stingray types. It could also carry two Mark 11 depth charges and intricate dipping sonar systems. Surface variants were formidable too, with the capacity to host four anti-ship Sea Skua missiles. For ground attack, the Lynx could be armed with dual 20mm cannons, twin 70mm rocket pods, or eight tow anti-tank guided missile pods, quickly changed mid-flight if necessary. The Lynx was more than a war machine, it could play peacekeeper too. With a cabin volume of approximately 5.2 cubic meters, it could transport up to nine troops, or haul 1,360 kilograms of cargo suspended from an external hook for ship-to-shore or ship-to-ship -ship transfer. Combat Service From the icy desolation of Antarctica, the scorching blazes of the Arabian Gulf, and everything in between, the Lynx became a force to be reckoned with. The versatile warbird served as a pillar of strength for the Army Air Corps and the Royal Navy for a commendable 38 years, featuring in over 22 active conflicts, from Operation Resolute in war-torn Kosovo and Operation Banner in Northern Ireland to Operation Herrick in Afghanistan. A staggering 17 different Army Air Corps squadrons relied on the Lynx's steadfast service, as did numerous other UK and overseas operators, including the Empire Test Pilot School, the Rotary Wing Test and Evaluation Squadron, and various foreign nations. The Falklands War in 1982 marked the Lynx's baptism by fire. Deployed to the South Atlantic, these machines quickly proved instrumental in patrol and anti-ship operations, outmaneuvering the Argentinian forces and bolstering the British naval superiority. One of the Lynx's most notable feats was its decisive role in disabling the Argentine patrol boat ARA Alferez Sobral with two Sea Skua missiles in 1982. The Lynx also played a crucial role in the complex anti-submarine warfare. Equipped with torpedoes and depth charges, they relentlessly pursued Argentine submarines. Sadly, three of these formidable machines never returned, not due to a combat loss, but because the ship they were being transported in was sunk by the Argentine Air Force. In the aftermath of the Falklands War, the Lynx continued to demonstrate its unmatched versatility. In 1983, it played a pivotal role alongside other British helicopters in evacuating British nationals from war-torn Beirut. Since then, and until the day its career ended, the Lynx saw continuous action, safeguarding British shipping interests in the Persian Gulf, countering Iraqi fast patrol boats in 1991, supporting operations in Sierra Leone and Northern Ireland, and fending off pirates off the coast of Somalia. around the world. 
The Westland Lynx gained a strong global presence, etching its mark far beyond its birthplace, the United Kingdom. In an unexpected turn, the first nation to harness the power of the Lynx wasn't a European neighbor, but distant Brazil. Since 1978, they've used the Lynx in high-stakes missions, including the intensive search for the Vanish Air France Flight 447 in 2009. In 1981, the Lynx caught the German Navy's eye. The Sea Lynx Mark 88 was born. Germany added their own touch, arming their Lynx fleet with modern anti-ship missiles and cutting-edge sensors. These upgraded beasts then patrolled the Somali coast to fend off pirates. Fast forward to 1990. The South Korean Navy got its hands on the Lynx. First, they added 12 Mark 99 helicopters to their fleet, and later 13 Mark 99A Super Lynx helicopters. Outfitted with advanced radar and other tech wonders, these machines played key roles in search and rescue missions, anti-submarine warfare, and surveillance. But then in 2010, the Lynx faced a storm. After two aircraft crashed in a single week, South Korea's Lynx fleet was grounded. An inspection revealed a scam involving fake documents and counterfeit component replacement. By 2011, the fallout had sent a dozen employees to jail and left several military officers in the dock. Over in France, since 1979, the Lynx Mark II had been a trusted member of the Navy, even welcoming the enhanced Mark IV into their fleet. But after decades of service, France bid adieu to the Lynx in 2020. As the days waned, the Lynx faced a bittersweet transformation. Its journey from analog to digital proved too great a leap. This shift marked its exit from British military life, making room for the new Wildcats to take center stage. Then in 2018, the revered Lynx, once the spine of the British Army and Royal Navy, took to the skies one last time. This grand finale was a dramatic flight over southern England, ending with a symbolic V-shaped procession along the Thames. This was the end of an era, bidding farewell to one of the most agile, versatile helicopters in history, one whose speed is still unmatched to this day. Thank you for watching Dark Skies. For more record-breaking aircraft and the battle stories where they were involved, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. And if you want more gripping military content, check out our other Dark Documentaries channels. We publish content regularly, so stay tuned.